Hey guys, so today we are going to be doing the long-awaited sunscreen roundup of 2022. So I have 12 mineral sunscreens that I have been testing out over the past few months, and I'm going to share my reviews on all of them with you. I'm going to share demos, compare them. I'm actually going to be ranking them from my least favorite to my favorite. These are all mineral sunscreens. The reason for that is because as much as I really do like chemical sunscreens because they don't have a white cast, my skin can no longer tolerate chemical sunscreens. They just irritate my skin. So lately I've just been sticking to mineral sunscreens and it can be really hard to find a good mineral sunscreen that doesn't leave a white cast, that doesn't feel heavy, sticky, greasy. But the good news is this year we have some really strong contenders. If you saw last year's roundup, there were so many bad ones. In fact, there were way more terrible sunscreens than there were good ones. This year, it's the opposite. I actually like almost all of these. There are a couple that I don't recommend, but most of these are actually really, really good. So for each one of these, I have a clip of me applying them. I have a clip of what they look like after they've had 10 minutes to sink in, and then another clip of what they look like underneath makeup, so you can get a really good feel for how all of these wear, at least on myself. For all of these, for the sake of consistency, I applied exactly a quarter teaspoon so that we could get a good, generous layer. Most people don't apply enough sun Screen, so I really wanted to make sure that I was applying the correct amount or at least as close to the correct amount as possible. Let's go ahead and start with my least favorite one and then we'll work our way up to my favorite. And let me just say, the favorite one this year, the winner, it really took me by surprise. I was not expecting to like it, so make sure you stay till the end to hear about the actually good ones. But first up, in 12th place, my least favorite this year is the MD Solar Sciences Mineral Cream with SPF 50. So this is a non-tinted sunscreen. It retails for $30, so it's not cheap. Although they do also sell a value size uh, that comes with 3.4 ounces, so you can get a slightly better value with it with that one. A couple good things about it, it is water resistant for 80 minutes and it is fragrance free. Those are two things I really like in a sunscreen. But unfortunately, I really do not like the texture of this. It's one of those with a very kind of silicone-y slippy texture. I don't always mind that, but with this one, it just kind of, it feels like it just forms this film on my skin that never really sets down or sinks in, and it's just super, super slippery. So for that reason, I don't feel like it makes a good base under makeup because my makeup, it just kind of feels like it's going to be sliding around on it all day. So I don't care for that. It also has probably the worst white cast out of all of these that I'm going to talk about today. And you'll see in the demo, it's really not that bad of a white cast. Like I have encountered way, way worse white casts with sunscreens before, but it does definitely have a white cast, even on my very fair skin. I've also found that this has a tendency to pill on my skin. It kind of like balls up. It also can cling to dry patches that I didn't even know I had. So it's just, yeah, I wanted to like this one because it is actually the only one here that is both water resistant and has a high SPF of 50, but unfortunately it just misses the mark for me. I really don't recommend it. Coming in at number 11, we have another one that I really don't recommend, unfortunately, from our friend Bert. This is the Bert's Bees SPF 30 Calming Day Lotion. Love the idea of a nice, calming, like, sensitive skin friendly mineral sunscreen. It's also affordable and accessible, so I really wanted to like this one again, but this one uh, retails for $15 in most places, but you can get it for $13 at Walmart. So the cost per ounce is one of the best ones on today's list, but I do have some other affordable ones that I like much, much better than this. So yeah, this is another miss for me. Unfortunately, it feels very sticky on my skin. It takes a while to blend in. To me, this just feels like you're classic zinc oxide based mineral sunscreen. It reminds me of one that I tested a few years back called the Acure Radically Rejuvenating SPF 30 Day Cream. Very similar to that. This one's a little bit better I think because it's not as prone to pilling, but I do get a little bit of pilling with this one sometimes. For me it just it feels sticky. It takes a while to blend in um, when I do apply that generous quarter teaspoon all over the face. I just feel like it's really hard to not get streaking with this, like wipe patches on my face. I also don't care for this underneath makeup. I feel like, you know, it looks okay at first, but as the day goes on, my makeup, within a few hours, it starts to just look kind of dry, separated, gross. So this one might be an okay option if you don't wear makeup and if you have a very fair skin tone that doesn't really show white casts very easily. It might be okay. Um, I like that it's fragrance free, but it's just not the most aesthetically pleasing sunscreen for me, so I, I really don't recommend this one. Once again, we have some really great affordable options coming up, so that one I don't recommend. 
So in 10th place, we have the other one that I have here from MD Solar Sciences. This is their Mineral Tinted Cream with SPF 30. So this is kind of like the tinted version of that first one that I talked about, but it only has SPF 30. This one is also water resistant though. This one retails for $33, so it's a few dollars more than the non-tinted version. It is also fragrance free. The tint is just kind of like a light peachy sort of tint. As you can tell, I am ranking this one a little bit higher than the non-tinted one just because I, I there have been times I've worn this and liked it, but once again, it has the same kind of slippery, silicone-y texture that, again, just never really feels like it quite sinks into your skin. It just kind of sits there, feels very slippery. For that reason, once again, I don't feel like it makes a great base for underneath makeup. It does have a matte finish, but it doesn't feel matte, if you know what I mean. Like, if you have oily skin, I feel like you're probably not gonna like the feeling of this on your skin. I have a lot of better oily skin friendly options here today. So I would personally skip this one as well. It's not cheap and I just think there's better options for around the same price point. If you do wanna spend this amount of money, <laughs> you can get something better. All right, so coming in at number nine, this one was kind of tricky to rank and I'll explain why in a moment, but this is the Michelle Dermaceuticals Sun Shield Liquid SPF 50. So this is another tinted sunscreen and one great thing about this is that it does come in four tinted shades and a non-tinted version. So I have the shade light. Now the tint, I feel like they could definitely expand to offer even deeper shades because the deepest one, they call it deep, but to me, at least online, it looks at best like a medium to deep shade. So I do think they could even expand that further, but even having more than one shade is a big improvement from most traditional tinted sunscreens. This one retails for $28, but you only get one fluid ounce of product. Most sunscreens come with like 1.7 to two fluid ounces, so it's only got about half of what you'd normally get in a standard sized sunscreen. So really not a great value compared to some of these others. This one, at least to the best of my knowledge, is fragrance free. It doesn't have any fragrance ingredients that I can see. I have the shade light, which is a really great shade match for my skin tone, just kind of a nice neutral, fair light shade. So in my opinion, this is more of a foundation than a sunscreen. Like this actually has coverage, whereas most tinted sunscreens don't really have coverage. So for that reason, I feel like it's kind of hard to compare this to some of these others because it's a little bit of just a different type of product. I would say this gives light to medium coverage. Like I feel like this makes an okay just standalone foundation. But at the same time, I actually do feel like it's possible to apply that full quarter teaspoon to my face and it not look terribly cakey. Whereas if you were to apply a quarter teaspoon of most foundations to your face, it's probably not gonna look great. So you could use this as your sunscreen and your foundation in one, just make sure to apply that correct amount. But of course you could also layer it under makeup if you wanted to. I just don't really feel like it's necessary to do that because this already has coverage to it. So the finish on this is definitely matte and on my dry skin, I do feel like it's a little bit too drying for me, especially when I wear this as a foundation. I do feel like as the day goes on, my face just starts to look very dry. So I think this would probably be best for oily skinned people. So going back to the cost of this, this is $28 for one fluid ounce, which is really expensive if you're using this as a standalone sunscreen, you're applying that quarter teaspoon every day, you're gonna fly through this. But if you're treating this as more of a foundation that maybe you're layering on top of another sunscreen, $28 for one ounce of foundation is actually not that crazy of a price. So if you're using this as more of a foundation that you're going to layer over a regular sunscreen, you're not going to go through it as quickly, that might be worth it to you. But again, the shade range, like if you're lucky enough to find a shade that works for you, then that's great. I was asked to compare this to the Ilia skin tint. Similar level of coverage actually. This one is just way more matte whereas the Ilia one is very dewy. The Ilia one is also more expensive but it also comes in a lot more shades. I personally prefer the Ilia one for a foundation just because I like a dewier foundation but I also don't use that Ilia one as a sunscreen. I use it as a foundation layered on top of a sunscreen. So I don't know. I have kind of mixed feelings about this. I think it's good for some people but for me, it's not my personal preferred sunscreen. Okay, so the rest of these sunscreens, these top eight, I actually really like all of these. I would recommend them to different people depending on what you're looking for. It was really hard to rank them, but yeah, I'm glad that I have so many good ones to share this year. So coming in at number eight, we have a new one from Kapari. This is the Kapari Antioxidant Face Shield Mineral SPF 30. This one is pricey. It retails for $38 and you get only 1.5 fluid ounces, which is a little bit less than most face sunscreens come with. So the cost per ounce, really not great. $25.33 per ounce, quite high. This is also not water resistant and it only has an SPF of 30. So 
even though I really, I actually really, really like this one, but because the value is not great and it's not water resistant, not a high SPF, that's why I'm ranking it a little bit lower. This one has a really, really elegant formula. It's very lightweight. It has kind of a thinner texture than some of these others. It's not a straight up liquid like the Michelle one, but it is kind of like a cross between a liquid and a cream. I like that it feels very hydrating and very moisturizing while also being a lightweight, thin formula at the same time. So it just doesn't feel terribly heavy. I think this would make a great one for especially dry skinned people. I don't know if you'd love this if you have oily skin because you'll see it is very glowy. But it's very lightweight. On me, it blends in pretty clear. Really don't get much of a white cast. There's no fragrance to this. And it's just all around really enjoyable to wear. It works well under makeup. I was nervous to try this because other Kapari products like their peptide moisturizer breaks me out. So I was really scared that this was going to break me out too. But so far, it does not seem to break me out whatsoever. So I'm really happy about that. Yeah, I mean, if you want to splurge on like a really beautifully formulated sunscreen, or if you just happen to find this on a really good sale, I would recommend it. I really would, like it's it's lovely. But if you're on a tight budget, no worries because I have some really great affordable options coming up. All right, so then at number seven, we have another drugstore option. Unfortunately though, despite being drugstore, this one is really not that great of a value. So this is the Bliss Block Star Invisible Daily Sunscreen with SPF 30. So it's technically drugstore because it's sold at Walmart, Target, places like that. But it retails for $22 to $25, depending on where you buy it. Again, Walmart is the cheapest place to get it. You can get it for $22 there. But the cost per ounce is not that great because this only comes with 1.4 fluid ounces, which again is less than your standard face sunscreen. So um, it's actually not that different of a cost per ounce compared to like the MD Solar Sciences ones or some Paula's Choice ones that I'm about to get into. So don't be fooled. Like, it's really not that affordable. On their website, they sell a travel size of this and the cost per ounce on that travel size is actually just about the same as the cost per ounce of the full size, which is usually not the case. Usually it's not as great of a value, but if you're thinking about trying this, I would recommend picking up that travel size just to start out and see if you like it before you commit to the full size. So this is another matte tinted sunscreen. It's not water resistant though, even though it feels like it would be. Like it feels like it sets and locks into your skin like a water resistant sunscreen would, but it doesn't have that water resistant claim on it. So you don't wanna rely on this one if you're gonna be swimming or sweating. Unfortunately, this one does contain fragrance. It has lavender oil in it and it does have a pretty noticeable lavender scent to it. Pretty strong, so if, if you're sensitive to fragrance, you, you'll wanna skip this one. But I honestly really enjoy this. Even though this is a matte sunscreen and I have kind of more dry leaning skin, I actually still really enjoy this. I feel like even though it is mattifying, it also does a good job just kind of smoothing over any dry patches that I might have rather than accentuating them. Um, of course, I always wear a moisturizer underneath. I always let, I always apply moisturizer, let that sink in for at least 10, 15 minutes, then go in with my sunscreen because I just can't get away with no moisturizer underneath. The tint on this is actually a pretty warm peachy tone. And coming up soon, I'm gonna have, um, like towards the end once we've talked about all the tinted sunscreens, I'm gonna have swatch comparisons of all of them on my arms. You can kind of get a good feel of what they all look like side by side. But the tint on this one is a very like warm peachy tone. It's a tiny bit too dark and too warm for my skin tone, but if I'm wearing it under makeup, I don't really care because it gets covered up by the makeup. But this, this tint would probably be the best for somebody with like a light to medium warm toned complexion. And this one to me makes a great like primer almost for underneath makeup because it has a very blurring quality, kind of a pore filling sort of effect. And unlike those MD Solar Sciences ones, it doesn't feel slippery. Like it really does feel like it kind of sets down and locks into your skin. So if you, whether you wear makeup or not, I think this is a really good option, assuming the tint is gonna work for you. Um, but I do actually have one that is very similar to this that I think is better because it's more affordable and it's water resistant. So stay tuned to hear about that one. But I still think this is a good one. It's just not my favorite. So in sixth place, we have another tinted option. This one is from Paula's Choice, which is one of my favorite brands. And this is their one of their most popular sunscreens. It's their Resist Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense with SPF 30. As you can see, I have the travel size of this, which I'm really glad that they do sell. Unlike the Bliss one, the cost per ounce on the travel size is gonna be higher than the full size, but it's still a good way to test it out if you want to before you buy that full size. The full size of this retails for $35 and you get two fluid ounces of product. So the cost per ounce is about $17.50, but you can almost always hold out for at least like a 20% off 
discount on Paula's Choice's website, so I'd recommend waiting. And with that sale price, the cost per ounce is actually $14 per ounce, which is really not bad. In fact, that's even a better value than the Bliss Block Star. <laughs> so unfortunately, this one is not water resistant and it's only SPF 30. The tint on this one is a little bit lighter, a little bit more neutral than the Bliss one as well. Um, this one has been popular for a long time for good reason. I think it really does live up to that super light name. It is very lightweight sinks in really quickly. When I had oily skin, I loved this product because it is so oil controlling. It would keep me matte all day and I swore by it when I had oily skin. So it's a great option for oily skin. On my dry skin, again, I find it just a teeny bit drying, even more so than the Bliss one, I think. But I do like it underneath the glowy foundation. I feel like it works okay under that kind of thing. The tint on this, perfect for my skin tone. I wish they would expand it to have a few more like deeper options, but I do think that this would make just a great everyday sunscreen for people with oily skin. But because the SPF is not higher and it's not water resistant, that's why I'm not ranking it any higher, but I do think it's a really, really good one for a lot of people. All right, so here's one with a high SPF that I've really been loving. This is the Josie Marin Argan Daily Moisturizer with SPF 47. This is the non-tinted version. They do also sell a tinted version, which I haven't tried. Um, this one retails for $36, but you do get a full two fluid ounces. So cost per ounce is $18 per ounce, pretty standard for a higher end option. Unfortunately, this one is not water resistant. This actually reminds me a little bit of the Kopari one that I was just talking about. It just has a higher SPF and it comes with more product, so it's a better bang for your buck in my opinion. If that one sounded good to you, um, I think you'd also probably like this one. I like that this feels very moisturizing and emollient, yet it's also got a similar kind of liquidy, like sort of runny cream texture. Not a pure liquid, but it's somewhere in between a liquid and a cream. So it's very lightweight while also being very hydrating at the same time. So I find it really enjoyable for my dry skin. I'm, I'm not sure if you love this if you have oily skin because it is very glowy. Probably the glowiest of all of these today maybe even a little bit glowier than the Kopari one. I personally really enjoy that. The only downside of this Josie Marin one is that it does contain fragrance. To me, it smells like strawberry yogurt. I don't mind the scent. I don't find it to irritate my skin, but if you need something fragrance-free, you'd wanna skip this one. But this is one that I like to reach for when I'm having a day where my skin is super dry and I just feel like I need like a really good drink of moisture for my skin. This one is amazing. So um, I do really enjoy this. But once again, it's not cheap and I do have some cheaper options coming up. So coming in in fourth place, honestly, my fourth and third place ones, they're both from Paula's Choice and they might as well be tied because they're so honestly so similar and I like them both equally. But I gave my fourth place spot to the Paula's Choice Defense Essential Glow Moisturizer. They say this one is for all skin types. This one retails for $31 for two fluid ounces, so it's a little bit cheaper by a few dollars than the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. Again, if you were to get this 20% off, which you often can, the cost per ounce is only $12.40. So once again, that's really not bad. That's, that's in line with a lot of drugstore options better than the Bliss one. Like all Polish Choice products is fragrance free. Unfortunately, once again, it is not water resistant. In fact, none of my Polish Choice ones today are water resistant. I don't know if they make any water resistant face sunscreens. I'm gonna have to double check, but they should. So this actually reminds me a lot of last year's winner, which was the Kinship Self Reflect SPF 32. Very similar, but I actually like this one better because it's a little bit lighter weight. It doesn't feel quite as heavy on your skin, but it's still really nice and glowy. And on me, this doesn't leave a white cast. It actually, I mean, if you look at it in the tube, you can see that it's not a stark white. It actually, I think, has a tiny bit of a tint, but it's not anywhere near the tint level of like the Bliss one or even the Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. I think it's just like a teeny bit of tint that they added to kind of neutralize the white cast. So I don't get a white cast on my skin. It blends in pretty much invisible on my skin. But there's also, I, I don't notice that tint really showing up either. I like it on its own. I like that glowy finish that it gives. It also works great underneath makeup. The only thing I've noticed about this is that if I get too much of it too close to my eyes, I feel like it makes the corners of my eyes water, uh, which doesn't happen with every product. Now I do, as you'll see in all these demos, I do apply sunscreen to my eyelids and my under eyes. I want those areas to be protected from the sun. and. For me, mineral sunscreens really don't typically sting or burn my eyes. Even this one doesn't burn. 
chemical sunscreens will burn my eyes terribly. <laughs> so um, that's one thing I like about mineral sunscreens versus chemical ones is I can apply them all over, including the eyelids, and I don't have any issues with stinging and watery eyes. But this one, it doesn't sting, but it does just cause a little bit of watering in the corners. So as long as I just make sure to only apply a small amount to that area and I don't get it too close to my eyes, it's fine. I really enjoy this one. I think it's a great option for really any skin type, but especially normal to dry skin, I think would especially like this. But yeah, I, again, I just wish the SPF were higher and I wish it were water resistant. So, you know, that's it. But it makes a fine everyday option, especially for spending most of the day indoors. I think it's a really good one. And then in third place, we have another Paula's Choice one. This is their Calm Mineral Moisturizer with SPF 30. And this is the one that's for normal to oily slash combination skin. They also make one that's for normal to dry skin, which I haven't tried. But oddly enough, I really like the one that's for oily skin, even though my skin does lean more dry. I find this one pretty moisturizing as well. I don't think it's quite as glowy as the Essential Glow. So for that reason, I do think this would make a slightly better option for normal to oily skin. Same price as the Essential Glow, retails for $31. This one, unlike the Essential Glow and the Super Light one, does not come in a travel size. And again, it's not water resistant, but it is fragrance free. So like I said, this one and the Essential Glow, for me, may as well be tied. Like I could go either way. I really enjoy both. This one is not tinted at all. This just gives a very skin-like finish on my skin. It's not overly matte, but it's not overly glowy either. So I think this could work for all skin types, even though they say it's for normal to oily. I think it could work for anyone. Although now I'm really curious to try the one that's meant for normal to dry skin, just to see how it compares. This one just feels like a moisturizer, even though it doesn't have a tint to it. I don't really get a white cast with it once again. But again, really been enjoying this one. I feel like it works well under makeup. Just wish it had a higher SPF and that it were water resistant. I feel like a broken record, but <laughs> I don't know why Paula's Choice doesn't um, have more water resistant mineral options. All right, we've made it to the top two, and I'm so excited to say that both of these are on the more affordable drugstore side, which makes me so happy. So I, I honestly love both of these so much. Number two is the Everyday by Unsun Mineral Tinted Face Sunscreen Lotion with SPF 30. It is tinted, but it comes in two shades. I have the light to medium shade. Now, if you remember last year's video, if you saw it, which I'll link it below if you do want to see it because I've tested out and reviewed a bunch of other sunscreens in that one, but I actually reviewed the medium to deep version of this last year. And the reason why I did that shade was because at the time, this light to medium shade wasn't available, or at least I didn't, I wasn't able to find it. I didn't even know they had it. So of course the medium deep shade was way too dark for me, but underneath makeup, it worked okay. At the time that I reviewed that one in that video, I just wasn't that big of a fan of matte sunscreen. So I think it was still ranked in like my top five, but it just wasn't my personal favorite. But the more I used that sunscreen and eventually used it up, the more I grew to like it. And it actually kind of is the sunscreen that got me to appreciate matte sunscreens, even on my dry skin. And honestly, it's crazy how much this reminds me of the Bliss Block Star, even down to the scent. Like they, this one too, the Unsun does have that kind of lavender fragrance to it. They smell almost the same. So again, if you need something fragrance free, this probably wouldn't be your best bet. This one I feel like is a teeny bit lighter weight than the Bliss one. And the tint of the light to medium shade is much more neutral. In fact, it almost has like a cool grayish tint to it that works perfectly on my skin. Like it just blends in to be completely invisible on my skin, but it has a very similar finish, a very similar feel, it kind of gives a slightly blurring effect to my skin. Even though I have dry skin, once again, I don't feel like this clings to dry patches. It doesn't, it, it kind of just smooths over those, makes my skin into a great canvas for makeup. I actually, my favorite way to use this is to wear it underneath a glowy sunscreen, like that Ilia Skin Tint. And I feel like because it's matte, it just keeps my makeup wearing longer than it otherwise would. But to me, this, this actually beats the bliss for a couple of reasons. Number one, it is cheaper and it's a better cost per ounce. This one does retail for $18, but you do get 1.7 fluid ounces. So the cost per ounce is right around $11 per ounce. Whereas again, the bliss one was like $16 per ounce. So better value. Uh, the other thing I like about it is that it is water resistant, whereas the Bliss one and the Paula's Choice one are not. 
And number three, it comes in two shades rather than just one. It comes in a light to medium and a medium to deep. And also bonus points that Unsun is a black owned brand. It's actually owned by Frank Ocean's mom, which makes me very happy. So as long as you're not bothered by fragrance, if you're looking for a good tinted mineral sunscreen, I highly recommend this. And I just realized that it's actually now available at CVS. Before that, I was only able to buy it on their website, but you can get it at CVS now. So it's a good accessible option now too. So yay. This is so good. This one makes me so happy. In fact, I'm almost done with it. Here's an up close look at what all of those tinted ones look like up close. I swatched them in order of how I ranked them. Okay, so my number one sunscreen. I'm so excited to finally be sharing this one. This one really took me by surprise. I was not expecting to even like this one bit, but I'm, I'm just, I'm so over the moon excited about this one. So my number one sunscreen pick in 2022 is the one I'm wearing today, this is the Pipette Mineral Sunscreen with Broad Spectrum SPF 50. I was not expecting to like this. This, as you can see, it's in a bigger tube. They don't specify that it's for the face specifically. You can use it on your face or your body. And I think that's kind of why I wasn't expecting to like it because something about the bigger tube, I was like, oh, this is just gonna be another classic heavy, sticky, greasy, white casty mineral sunscreen, but boy was I wrong. So it works great on the face. I actually hate mineral sunscreens on my body, all of them. I don't like them on my body. I only wear chemical sunscreens on my body. So this one retails for $12. You can get it on Ulta's website, among a few other places. $12, but you get four fluid ounces of product, which is more than double what your average face sunscreen comes with. So that brings the cost per ounce to an unreal $3 per ounce, which is by far the most cost-effective one on today's list. So that is one big reason why I'm ranking this so high, but not only is it the most cost-effective one today, but I also really love the formula of this. It just feels, again, it just feels like a lotion. It does go on looking white, but it sinks in quickly. The white cast on me dissipates very quickly. And I'm able to wear this on no makeup days without an obvious white cast. Today I'm wearing it underneath makeup. I'm very happy with the way that my makeup looks. The finish is more on the glowy side. It's not as glowy as, say, the Josie Marin or the Kopari, but it is definitely more glowy, although I think it could work for oily skin as long as you don't mind a little bit of moisture and glow on your skin. It's just as good to me as some of these other non-tinted ones that I've talked about, like the Paula's Choice Calm, the Josie Marin, the Kopari. I mean, it's really, really similar. Wears great under makeup. It's fragrance-free. It has a high SPF of 50. So I just feel really good about this, especially when I'm gonna be outdoors or it's just a really sunny day. I'm so, so happy I tried this, despite the fact that I had very, very, very low expectations for it. I really love it. Not only is it a great value, but it's it's also just a great formula. And if you're like me, you know, if this is going to be the only SPF that you wear on your face every single day, you don't have to worry about flying through it in like a month. You know, some of these smaller sizes, like even a, a 1.7 fluid ounce tube of sunscreen, I go through pretty quickly if it's the only sunscreen I'm using. So it's just nice to know that it's going to last you a little bit longer and uh, it's just so affordable. My only wish is that it were water resistant. That's like the only thing that it doesn't have, <laughs> the only box it doesn't check. But next mission is gonna be to find a good water resistant SPF 50 or higher. I really wanna try the new Kinship SPF 60 Sport that is water resistant. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get my hands on that one in time for this video, but maybe I'll have to include that one in next year's roundup. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this and found it helpful. I'm so, so excited to have found so many good mineral sunscreens this year because last year it was rough. If you saw last year's video, I mean, wow, there were some real doozies in that video. So I do feel like mineral sunscreens have come a long way. They're improving year after year. I feel like they're getting better and better. So there is hope if you're on the hunt for a good mineral sunscreen. I hope you were able to find one today that will work well for you. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you've not already. I love sharing about sunscreen. I also share about makeup a lot. Most of my videos are makeup related, but I do love reviewing sunscreens on my channel as well. Um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, I'll also link below all of my previous sunscreen roundups. This is my fourth annual. I think. I've done 19, 20, 20, Yeah, this is my fourth annual sunscreen roundup. In some years past, I've done chemical sunscreens as well. Um, it was only until this past year that I wasn't able to tolerate chemical sunscreens anymore. Really, once I started using prescription tretinoin was when it just became like too much for my skin. So 
mineral all the way now, but honestly, I don't even mind because I really love mineral sunscreens. I love that I can just slather them up close to my eyes and I have no problem. So anyway, thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!